Welcome to another episode of Crosstalk. My name is Kevin Tocci, and I'll be your host for the next 30 minutes. And as you've come to know this particular program, we like to do uh, things that are related to the two communities that we serve or something that's on the South Shore, uh, whether it's politics, upcoming event, maybe it's a special interest type of thing. Well, today, we're going to talk about something really cool. Uh, we have a, an old friend who is back who you've, <laughs> you've seen on this channel before. And we're going to talk a little bit about a show coming up uh, this month uh, up at the Hingham Civic Music Theater. And we have uh, closest to me is Ellen Spadosha. Very good. Make sure I said that correctly. <laughs> and Julie Grant. Hi, Kevin. And they both are very important to uh, this production that's going to be going up of Young Frankenstein. <laughs> and so we're going to talk a little bit about the show. Uh, both of them have kind of, uh, not only do they have roles in the show, but they kind of know the inside to not only the show that's going to be on stage, but Julie, of course, is kind of a big fan of the movie, the movie itself, mm -hmm. which is uh, not a bad thing. So we're going to talk about everything, a uh, young Frankenstein, talk about this show, the importance of it, and even talk a little about the, the Hingham Civic uh, Music Theater as you are mm -hmm. the president of their board. I have been for two years, yep. Wow. What's <laughs> that like? It's a lot of fun and it's a lot of work, but I am surrounded by a board of members that are the best, most hardest working group of people you'll ever meet. Um, it's, we are a nonprofit group and it's not easy to put on a show, but we put on two musicals every year, spring and fall. Uh, we're very blessed to have space that the Hingham Town Hall lets us use in their Sanborn Auditorium in Hingham. Mm -hmm. And we just love putting on quality shows. We try to make it reasonable prices so that everyone can come. Um, we have cast members that are age 8 through 80, basically. As long as you're 8 years and up, you can be in a show, depending on the type of show it is. Unfortunately, with Mel Brooks, this is not the kids' show. No. <laughs> but uh, we just finished a whole run of shows over the last year and a half with Sound of Music and Christmas Carol and um, Wizard of Oz was our last show. So we had a lot of fun. So oh and, and now we're looking for a, a half of the cast is new, half the cast is um, f familiar faces are coming back, and we're having a lot of fun right now. Talk about other than being somebody who is uh, part of the, the, the nonprofit aspect of mm -hmm. it, you're, you're president of the board, um, you're somebody who's on stage a lot too. I love, every chance I get, I love it. So I've been singing since I was five years old and very well. Very, very hard to get me off stage when I'm on there. So, <laughs> what's to, tell me some of your favorite roles that you've had a chance to play, whether they're uh -huh. you know, the lead role or, or uh, supporting or, or just, you know what, somewhere in there. Yeah, I actually, I'm having fun with this group right now. Um, Julie and I met in Spam a lot a couple of years back and we've been friends since then. And I also did uh, Reverend Mother in Nonsense, it was the lead role, and that was hysterical. And my friends reminded me that you know, it was very fun when I got um, a chance to party with people because I had a scene where I had to be um, more excitable than usual, I guess. And they reminded me how much fun they, I had been when I was younger as well as when I am now. So it was a lot of fun. Um, it's just, it's any type of chance I've got a chance to get on stage is amazing because the people around me are so great. and. It's just a pleasure being up there and helping to entertain the South Shore. So, how did you become involved uh, with the show? And, and if if you could just remind folks who uh, might have forgotten since the last time that you were here, I, I think I want to say that you were here for Wizard of Oz. I was. And you also have been here on. And another, that was with Massasoit. And that was with Massasoit yes. Community. That's correct. We'll make mm -hmm. sure we kind of yeah. set the two of them. <laughs> uh, we'll get you involved with with Hingham, and and if you will share with folks some of the stuff that you've done over the years. Uh, well, in 2013, like Ellen said, I did Spam a lot over in Hingham. It was my first non-Massasoit show, um, and I knew the choreographer very well for that show, and they needed some dancers, so she called me, and I joined that cast, and that was my most favorite show that I've ever done. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of those, a lot of why I loved that show so much, not only was it funny, but um, the cast, we just got along so well, we kind of coined the phrase forever friends, and it's so far been true. Um, a lot of times when you do shows, you become fast friends, and then as the show ends, you know, you kind of naturally just separate and go back to your lives. Um, with Spamalot, that didn't happen, and a lot of those people that did Spamalot are doing Young Frankenstein, so it just made sense for me to join the group as well. 
friends or theater family? I mean, what would you call well, it? Well, it's ironic you just say that because <laughs> we've always said that we're forever friends, and just last night we decided we're forever family. Aww. So it's quite mm -hmm. a tight group. We're what very lucky. It? People who don't know, anybody who's never had the joy or the chance to participate in community theater, whether it's building sets or having a small role where you walk on or, or somebody who has a, a, a meaty role that they're seen in several scenes, what is it like to kind of to kind of get be cohesive with a group of people? It is priceless. Yeah. It doesn't happen at every show. Mm -hmm. There are certain shows that just have a magic about them, and um, this group definitely we have some magic between us. Mm -hmm. We work well together. I think we all have similar goals, similar expectations of ourselves and each other. Every single one of us shows up for rehearsal, ready to work, and we fool around. We have fun too, but. Um, yeah, there's no one that thinks that anyone is better than the other. We are definitely there together as a team um, to work towards the common goal, and I think that that's what unites us, and that's what makes us special mm -hmm. as a theater group. And I have to add to um, just it's one of those things where you see people that have done theater before, and you have people that have never been on stage before, and you see people that have been on stage before in college, but they haven't been on stage in the last 20 years, and it's just it's such a work in progress. And in this show especially, it's great because. The ensemble of the show that Julie and I are in, um, as well as the leads, we're on stage almost all the time. It's just mm -hmm. like we're in, we're out, we're changing costumes backstage. Especially the first act, we're in and out a lot. Exactly. Yeah. And it's one of those things where it's just it's a great ensemble piece and everyone's got a role to play. And whether you've been acting for the last 50 years or you've been you know, brand new to the stage this month, mm. it's, it's a fun group to be with. We, we're really proud of that in HCMT that we welcome everybody and we're I think really everybody feels that. important don't you think, I, think so too. I mean we can't speak for everybody but <laughs> well, we can. I mean maybe we can <laughs> but I feel that everyone is important in the show exactly there are no small roles for sure T talk to me as far as uh, the direction how I mean mm -hmm. because that's how it I think it's begun you know how it begins <laughs> is when after you know everybody is picked for their certain roles um, you get director, choreographer, The leaders set the tone. The, the people who set the tone, who have the mm -hmm. vision as to it. Listen, I, I mean, I myself have done a few shows, and depending on who the director is, is they have a certain vision. And listen, I'll be the first one to tell you, I was in, I was in Annie, and I played a role that was actually set for a female, but I was, I was picked to be that. That's what yeah. the director wanted, was mm -hmm. me to play the role of an individual. I'm like, okay, sure, you know. It's, it's great, and we have, we're lucky to have Catherine Ritter. She's our director and our leader in charge. And we have Krista DiBenedetto, who's our music director. She's amazing. wonderful to work with. Mm -hmm. And Janet Fortier, who's our choreographer, and she's amazing. And it's just they're a tight, uh, tight production team. Mm -hmm. They work well behind the scenes as well as on stage. You'll see Catherine building sets and painting sets as well as directing people and giving them their, their blocking. And she's just got this great, great goal of what the show should look like. She's had it in her head since she first was found out she was going to be the art director. And she conveys it. She wants everyone to feel important and have a space She's kind-hearted. She's sweet and um, very enthusiastic and excited about, about this adventure that yeah. we've been on. And I think what makes her so special as a director, at least from my point of view, is that she has been in every pair of shoes on and off the yeah. stage. Mm -hmm. So to see her as the director, and she really knows what it's like to be Mm -hmm. in everybody's shoes, like how I said, and so that that's really important. It, it is important. Because she can communicate well and, and direct well, really. I guess, how is she, how, is she, how do you select your directors? Is it something that when you guys decided the show, uh, for mm -hmm. a show, yep. as a board, mm -hmm. you say, hmm, do, we put, do you put out an ad? Is it a matter of who's available? Because there are shows going on all around there the are. South Shore and the Commonwealth. I mean, there, there this, Hingham isn't alone. There's you got no. down right down the road. You got uh, uh, Norwell, the mm -hmm. theater company. You've got Massasoit. Yeah. You've got Rogue Theater and, and Todd. There's That's so many. Scary. There's yeah. so many. H how do you decide who's going to be leading, directing your shows? That's a really good question. I mean, we pick two musicals a year, and we always try to figure out. You know, is is it time for a family show? Is it time to have a, a show that, you know, is brand new to the area? And the good thing about Young Frankenstein is that it's great to be one of the first uh, community theaters that are debuting this, this particular version on stage. And so what comes up with our directors is that we may have some talented, pe pe talented people in our membership, or we may have the chance to offer new members or new people who want to direct for our group. We advertise on our website, which is www.hcmt.org. Uh, we also advertise on, it used to be New England 411, 411, but now we have 
they have a new name to it, but we advertise for actors and directors and directing teams on the South Shore. And we just put the word out. We've got a, a whole group of people who've been doing theater for a long time. They put the word out when we need people to come and help for us, and we get a lot of response. It's really nice. Why musicals? I mean, there's, there's so many types of plays that you can do. You can do, you know, straight. I mean, mm -hmm. why, why musicals? What is it about them? It's a good question. Um, one thing people will tell you is that we're Hingham Civic Music Theater. We started out as a choral group, so it's kind of expected that we do musicals. Okay. Um, I think musicals are fun, though, because you can have a variety of people involved in different talents, because you have the dancers, you have the singers, you have people who love just to be on stage acting, and it just kind of brings out the talents of a, a multitude of people right now. And to see people, again, from ages 8 to 88 coming up on stage and showcasing their talents and showing themselves sure that they have so much talent in the, in the area, um, it's just a great feeling, it really is. So musicals make us happy. It certainly <laughs> does. Mm -hmm. what, what do you like about musicals? <laughs> what, what is it about? Is it, is it a matter of having those three things, whether it's a Definitely. dance, <laughs> the act? I enjoy that? performing overall, mm -hmm. personally. Dancing is definitely my forte, but um, the theater allows me to play yeah. a little bit more. Does you know, with, with dancing, maybe it's a little more exact, um, just straight dancing. Uh, with theater, I get to play more and, and be, even if I'm only in the ensemble, I always envision myself being a character and like sure. what is my little side story even if it never ever gets um, showcased or spotlighted in any way it's still how I go about it. But you're somebody who is, I know for a fact that, that is deemed a triple threat. You, you're you <laughs> able to, you can act, mm -hmm. you can sing, yep. you, you already Kevin. mentioned that you <laughs> dance. I mean I mean it's, it's got nice to be something, say, thank you. I'm just be calling it the way it is. I've, I've seen you in action. I haven't mm -hmm. seen you yet. That's Ella, okay. You're welcome to come. Ilha, She's Ilha. Not quite a leader. <laughs> is she? Um, I would say that I'm, you know, I struggle with the singing. I get through it. I've had great um, leaders. Chris is amazing. Mm -hmm. He makes me feel comfortable with what I have to sing. Um, I'm an alto, and so Ellen is a very strong <laughs> alto. Mm -hmm. Very mm -hmm. strong alto. Most of us want to sit near her because she <laughs> leads. She can hear the direction and make it happen. Whereas for some of us, we might struggle and need to like run it quite a few times to get it right. She usually can hear the direction once and nail it. I always have my phone right near her mouth <laughs> while yeah. we're rehearsing so that I can hear those, hear her, make sure that I'm doing it right. Now you're a big fan of, of the movie. How does it, how does it relate to <laughs> being in the show? You've got to be thrilled. I am very thrilled. I've been watching this show See, I've never seen the musical. Until I was in it, I didn't really know the storyline, which is interesting. Um, but the movie I just love, and when I found out that it was coming, I was very excited about it. Um, what I've learned through doing the musical is it gives a little bit more to the backstory, mm -hmm. and it kind of sums up some things that you don't you know, know about in the movie, while still holding true to the iconic moments. Mm -hmm. um, those people that have seen the movie know what I'm talking about, um, and so far every actor has gotten everything right. My expectations have been pretty high, and um, things like um, What Hump and Walk This Way, mm -hmm. and um, Brow Blood, you know, <laughs> even just when um, the doctor says, "Okay, tie up a nightgown and let's go," like mm -hmm. that, everything is just said and done perfectly, and so it's really giving a tribute to the movie. And, and you even actually, funny, in your bio, you actually have like a little a little, uh, a little, little tidbit. Anybody who's like a, if somebody like watches this certain like movies where they'll have like a little bubble, you know, bubble yes. bubble facts that pop up. And you have like a little bubble fact in your bio, don't I do. you? I do. Share. <laughs> so um, I was watching, it was one of those behind the scenes or behind the story. Um, Love that stuff. Um, for Aerosmith. And this was right after um, I found out that I was going to be in the show mm -hmm. and found out that Steven Tyler in 1974 um, wrote the song Walk This Way after seeing the movie Young Frankenstein. Oh. Little Pretty note cool. Which is cool. You know, they, they were so excited about the movie, especially the Walk This Way scene. And um, when they were in the studio just chatting about the movie, uh, somebody had said, you know, Walk This Way, that sounds like a song. And um, I think it was kind of almost a dare for Steven Tyler, like, see if you can make a song about that. And he did. Yeah. Walk this way. It was funny, not to, not to get off topic here, but you think of that, you know, he, he took, you know, a movie and used it as a way to 
be known, and people people know him for that song. But that song also helped him be reinvented when another genre of music. That's right, yeah. with Run DMC. Right. So that, exactly. that, that thing is it's kind of like the you know the song that keeps giving. That's right. <laughs> and you figure the movie came out in 1974, mm -hmm. and so um, the Aerosmith song came out, you know, whatever soon after, and then it was like in the 80s with yep. Run DMC. Yeah, you're right. Interesting. Funny little thing. It is. Let's talk about some of the folks who are uh, performing in this, if you will. Give us the Definitely. rundown. Who who gets to uh, play some of the great roles like Dr. Frederick Frankenstein? Yes, that's our, our mad doctor, or grandson of the mad doctor, basically, is a gentleman by the name of Dan, and he is amazing. I mean, he just embraces the part. He comes into town basically finding out that his grandfather has passed away mm. and that he has to go into Transylvania from leaving New York, his New York doctor, of medicine school that he's mm -hmm. in. And uh, he has to go to Transylvania, this place he's never known. He abandons his fiance, he has to go and clean up his grandfather's affairs. And then all chaos ensues when people that he meet try to get him involved in recreating his grandfather's work about making a new monster. So he's just amazing to watch, he really is. Now who gets to be the monster? <laughs> that would be Brendan Smith. <laughs> really? He's so awesome. I mean, think about it. I mean, there are some people, especially a lot of this cast, have only seen the musical and not the movie. Mm -hmm. So the audience members, I think, are going to be made up of so many different types of people coming to see the show. People that love the movie, people that, or people that love the musical, or it's coming at a great time of year because it's Halloween time. Sure. So there's going to be many different types of people in the audience. And uh, Brendan is so awesome. You have to be. If you're going to step into <laughs> Peter Boyle's shoes and try to replicate the same thing with Dan doing Gene Wilder, like, oh not gosh, that they're yeah. doing the movie characters, because they're not. They're definitely different from the movie. Yeah. But they all hold true to the things that, that are necessary, the characters themselves. We'll do this uh, again at the end, but we're, we're kind of at the halfway mark. Just want to remind folks of the performance dates of, uh, okay. of this presentation being brought by the Hingham uh, Civic Music Theater, uh, October 17th, 23rd, and 24th. All those shows, curtain goes up at 7.30, mm -hmm. and then you have one matinee on October 18th. Uh, if uh, Paul, if you will put that up, the information, if folks want to get tickets, you want to call, there's the email address, there's also the phone number. Fear not, don't run and get a pen. <laughs> this is just kind of a warning right now that we'll, before we wrap up, I'll ask the ladies to kind of remind folks mm -hmm. as to how they can get information as far as getting tickets, getting them in advance and finding out show times and stuff, stuff like that. Who else do we have in this cast that you want to share? Let's not leave anybody out if, 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 if possible. Yep, we have Janine who's playing the sexy young uh, lab assistant Inga. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have, I'm trying to think who else now, I keep totally on this. Uh, we have um, Igor. Igor. Oh, Igor. Oh he my cr gosh. Bri yes, Brian. Brian. We love Brian. He's so He's funny. He's doing such a good job. <laughs> I'm really proud of him. Yes, mm -hmm. When he, he and uh, Dan do their scenes together of when they first meet the, um, Igor and, and Dr. Frankenstein, it's hysterical. It really is. I mean, audiences are going to love that because it just laugh, you laugh and laugh and laugh when you watch them. Um, we have very talented ensemble men. Okay, let's just for one moment talk about the horse. Oh my okay? gosh. <laughs> like, so it, she's right, the ensemble. It really, mm -hmm. we really are a team. I mean, the horse. Yes, we have Sarah Dewey who is playing, oh gosh, she plays the waitress in the boat to Transylvania. She plays the, the, telegram uh, lady. the New York telegraph or telegram lady that comes in and gives Dr. Frankenstein the news via telegram. Uh, she plays our horse for the, the hay ride that goes through. Um, showstopper. She's oh a gosh. showstopper, <laughs> right? She's so funny, and she's and she's also in the en ensemble. And um, like Julie was saying, the ensemble we have about twenty people, or twenty twenty five people in the cast, mm. and everyone has like their little niche, their little spot. Yeah, this if I, if I may li read off the, the list. Of course, I'm cheating. I have it right, right in front of me. <laughs> Just it, it helps you. Grave diggers, villagers, medical students, mad scientists. Mm -hmm. Yes, we, we. I don't see horse on here though. No, well that's part of the Transylvanian backdrop, I guess. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But it, it's funny because, I mean, the ensemble is great, too, because they... Oh, Frau Broker. You know, oh, I'm sorry, Sharon, yes. Um, Frau Broker, nay. Um, <laughs> she is a wonderful actress, and she portrays that that um, dark lady that, that used to actually date the grandfather, Dr. Frankenstein. And okay. so we end up uh, finding out a little bit more about her character as the show A little bit on. too much about her. Yeah. She's, <laughs> she's very much into sharing a lot of information, so... Mm. Um, that's we won't, quite we won't funny. spoil that, but mm -hmm. yes, she's wonderful. And you know, um, going back to the ensemble for a minute too, is they're on stage. They're grave diggers on one side. They're Transylvanian villagers. They're ghosts of the Frederick uh, Frankenstein clan. There, mm. um, it's just 
I can't talk about any one character there enough. They're just all amazing. They really are. Okay. So. And if anybody's left out, that oh, it's and I'm sorry if I did. <laughs> there you go. Oh. If you want to kind of read off, if that, if that if that helps you again. Yep. Oh. Um, they're yeah, pretty much we're all pretty great. I think. Yep. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> we have um, also Benjamin Brennan, who is Inspector Hanskam. Um, Tyler Kavanaugh, who is our lonely hermit. Okay. Um, Ziggy. Oh my gosh, I forgot about Ziggy. Jack Cunningham. He's a young um, student, basically. He's 15 years old, mm. I think, and he's playing our village idiot. And every village needs a village idiot, and he's wonderful at it too. That's true. But literally, I, I mean, I could stop and say something wonderful about each person: yeah. Gabe, Jamie, Joel, Kelly. Nicole, Patty, Marion, Roy, Greg, Sarah, Jamie, Kelly. Nicole, did you say uh, yep, Nicole? Nicole. Um, yep, they're all wonderful, and we appreciate all their talents that mm -hmm. they share with us. What's and it, friendship? And friendship too. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. What's it like seeing seeing a show come together from from when the blocking is done? Because folks don't know what goes. Some oh, no. I don't think that folks don't really appreciate what it takes from you know when people first come together, mm -hmm. the blocking, how the director wants to see the scene go, yep. to where everybody's you know, you're off book. Mm -hmm. To where you know you're starting at the music, uh, to where you know you got you get to the point where you're well, doing auditions dress rehearsals. were like July, yep, we and are. then we had um, a, two gatherings before yep. the first rehearsal, okay. just to kind of talk about the vision and get to know each other and go from there. And then we which started. is unlike I think a lot of shows. I don't think yeah. many shows have that many gatherings before you actually start. Usually, mm -hmm. the first rehearsal is the first rehearsal. Yeah, mm -hmm. don't you think? I think so too. I really do. And Catherine's so, I knew we were out, unique so. before we even started. <laughs> that it was going to be like an awesome show. <laughs> really, and it's just uh, the group is so great because they're all volunteers. I mean, none of them are paid. Right. They're just they show up because they love to do the, the work, mm -hmm. and they go to rehearsals two and three nights a week. Um, we'll be doing four nights a week next week as we get closer to the show. And it's just so amazing because you know they're, they're learning their music and their dance on their own time and coming back and putting it all together because we learn the music and we learn the dance steps, but we have to memorize it basically going home and practicing it. And they put so much energy and time into it. It's just amazing. It's just I'm honored to be on the stage with all of them. So I, I agree, <laughs> and it is such a process, you know, from beginning from from audition and those yeah. early gatherings to yeah. today, and the progress that we've all made together mm -hmm. as a group. It's Pretty awesome to see. And, and you have access to the Sandboard uh, Auditorium uh, uh, on uh, regular um, yep, practices. Hang um, on, town open lets us lets us use the space when we need to Monday through Thursday nights when they're also having other town meetings going on and things like that. But we take um, we're really actually we take great care to, to um, appreciate what they do for us because between I them and the custodians that. and the people that arrange for us to have that space we wouldn't be able to practice and have a show without them. So we're really blessed to have that, so. Is there any interesting aspects that I haven't asked you about at this particular time that maybe mm -hmm. before we go any further, you have an opportunity to kind of talk about, wi whether it's with this show, whether it's a matter as to it being on the stage or, or being something that's in the movie or a little both? I think the costumes, I, I know oh you briefly gosh. mentioned it, um, Catherine doing some of the Mm -hmm. um, seamstress, seamstressing and things like that, but um, they really are awesome. Oh gosh, I, yeah. I wear a peasant <laughs> dress and it just looks like it came from Romania from, from that time, <laughs> you know, and um, a lot of the little props and things like that are, mm -hmm. are just really great. And, um, and the set pieces, I mean, they're amazing. We have dedicated people that come out every show and, and help us out with that. And it's just The bookcase, we should mention Ooh, the bookcase. Yes. It's awesome. If you've seen the movie, um, there is a uh, rolling... Um, is it like a Scooby-Doo Scooby bookcase, basically? Yes. <laughs> What's a candle book? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so um, it's really impressive. Last night was the first time that I saw the bookcase in action, and I was really, really impressed. But, impressed. The, but the set is coming together as we've spoken, right? Of course, yeah, of course. We, yep, we're, we're on stage memorizing lines, and the set is basically being built around us. It's amazing. So Both shows have one week of tech. We have two. Yeah. Really? We're going to be solid. We're, we're solid. I mean, we're already solid at the stage that we're at, the point that we're at um, by, by curtain. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> I guess I, w I would ask you is what happens as far as how many people can um, – can this theater ac accommodate as far as the Hingham Town Hall? I think we can actually accommodate close to 300 people, and that's not including the balcony. Wow. Um, it's, it's between two and 300, anyway, including Wait, the balcony. Wait, there's a balcony? We have a balcony with a handful of seats up there, um, but a lot of our light and our sound equipment go up there as well, and our, our tech folks are up there, so we usually try to keep everyone on the first level. 
but it's a great, it used to be, I guess, an old Hingham High School, and they've got a great auditorium, and we have uh, brand new curtains from, that we were able, lucky enough to be given um, a couple of years back from, I think it was one of the Boston theater groups, the, the professional Boston theater groups. Mm -hmm. And so we just, we try to make it as much of a, a grand professional theater experience as we can. And it's just, it's so nice that the audiences are so appreciative that always great and coming and su showing support, you know, show after show. And it's just very nice to be able to provide that service to the community. And community theater is so important because it does give that aspect that you don't always get in a lot of areas when it comes to the arts and, you know, people of different ages coming out and playing together and having fun. It's really great, so. And, and I guess maybe we should also mention to folks, again, this is something that's local. Mm -hmm. It's oh, a local yes. product. Hey, you don't have to drive to Boston. No. You <laughs> don't have to drive to Boston, and it, it, it costs. You don't even have to pay for parking. Yep, exactly. Free parking. parking is free. Tickets are 20. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. free and it's parking. right next to the police station, so it's so, so safe. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. right safe. What yep. else can I say that's great about it? It's uh, $20, 20 a ticket. Um, or? Or if you prepay and order 10 tickets or more ahead of time, you can get them for 15 we like bargains, so we're always happy to help out with that. And that's great when you have families sort of trying to come see a show because it can be very costly to go ahead and see a theater group nowadays. So we try to keep our rates low. And again, I think the important thing is this a f this is a family show. Well, I or think is this, this particular a show. <laughs> I would say maybe middle school and up. Okay, yeah, something like that. Just want to thirteen. Yep. Just want to make sure that we let folks know. So if they yep. happen to bring yeah. their ones. Yep. We want to make sure that it's 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 appropriate. We know yep. we, we let them know what's going on here because it's a fun show. We want to make sure that mm -hmm. folks know. Yes, mm -hmm. and we are hoping to have um, family more family friendly shows in the future. We're hoping, looking into the rights, possibly for Beauty and the Beast in the fall next year. So we will have uh, family friendly shows. A, a good balance coming up soon. How, what what did you do? You have like do you do like seasons like. Yep. How does that work? Um, we basically try to do pick two shows at a time, so that way we know if we're going to use set pieces or core cor um, props, that sort of thing, from one show, we can recycle them for other shows too. We try to do one family-friendly show a year, and we um, basically try to just t pick shows that are of interest to the group, either the classics or we'll go for new things like Young Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. We'll try to go ahead and find shows that meet our um, average auditioner because we have certain age groups that show up an awful lot. We've got a lot of kids. We've got a lot of people in their 20s and 30s. So we try to keep it interesting. We have like two minutes left. Okay. So this yeah. is the chance for your chance to fill folks in mm -hmm. on when, where, and how, and how they can get how they can get, get information regarding tickets. Yep. Well, you have the website for round paper tickets, which is where you can buy tickets online. Uh, you also have our website for HCMT, which is www.hcmt.org. There's links to brown paper tickets as well. We sell tickets by cash and by check only at the door. Okay. No, no credit cards, please. And we and we'll actually have Paul flash put oh. actually put it okay. up right now if you will, Paul. If you could key that uh, that information for them again, the website mm -hmm. and the phone number, so folks know. Yep. If uh, folks want to uh, get tickets, email uh, what is it? HCMT -t tickets. Mm -hmm at gmail.com, mm -hmm. also 781-749-3400. Uh, Anything you ladies want to say in closing to kind of? I would say that if you're coming, whether you love the movie or you love musicals or this particular musical, or if you just want to do something festive for Halloween, this is definitely what you should do. Yep. The show is talented, the cast is amazing, and we're having fun and we want to share that fun with everyone. So Definitely. come see the show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We've worked really hard. So <laughs> it's, It sounds like it. And again, um, it's something that if sh folks should get out. Just a reminder, mm -hmm. performance dates, October 17th, tw 23rd, 24th at 7.30 p.m., October 18th at 2 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Ellen, Julie, thank you very much for being thank you, Kevin. my thank you guest. For having us. And thank you very much for tuning in to Crosstalk. Until next time. Thank you.